If you are on the Twitter, you probably know, have had a tiff with, or maybe have been blocked by the infamous Neera Tandon. Most of you probably didn't even know who Neera Tandon was five years ago. Uh, if you lived in the Beltway, you probably had run across her. Uh, or if you're, <laughs> you were on the platform committee like myself, you got into arguments with her. Neera Tandon is the president of the Center for American Progress. The Center for American Prog Progress uh, has become a vehicle or has been a vehicle of the centrist world for many years. But what do they actually do? Who are they? And why do they actually matter? Well, Sam Finkelstein, who is our resident follow the money expert, has done a little research. And just in time for the primary cycle and many, many, many more battles on Twitter, uh, we're going to give you guys a primer on who are the mysterious progressives at Center for American Progress. <laughs> there aren't any. All right, Sam, what the hell is Center for American Progress? So the Center for American Progress is the, uh, it, it will tell you on its website that it is the largest progressive think tank. And the word progressive does a lot of heavy lifting there because like you said, they're not especially progressive. Um, but they, you know, they write policy for centrist candidates, essentially. All right. So they have this this summit that uh, took place not too far after the 2016 cycle. I think it was in 2017, in which, you know, people who we now know did end up running for president uh, went there, went on panels, talked about issues. And one person notably did not show up, and that was Bernie Sanders. So uh, before we get into why they influence politicians, I I'd like to know a little bit about who's backing them and what their agenda is with these types of conferences. So specifically with the 2017 conference that you're, you're referencing, um, Kamala Harris was in attendance, uh, Cory Booker was in attendance, Kirsten Gillibrand was in attendance, uh, and Elizabeth Warren was in attendance. Um, Bernie Sanders was not invited. And it's the sort of event that I couldn't envision Bernie Sanders being at in the first place. Right. It was the Four Seasons tickets, you know, for uh, attendees who were not, uh, you know, special political invites were a thousand dollars a ticket minimum. <laughs> it's just not. It wasn't a Bernie sort of affair, but it was. Re it, it's really emblematic of what Cap represents in the Democratic Party world. Um, it's an institution for the sort of people who are going to pay a thousand dollars to listen to Kirsten Gillibrand speak. Okay. So, so the tickets are expensive. The people who go there are in the elite bubble or want to be in the elite bubble. That's all well and good. Uh, they're bigger forces that are funding cap and they oh. have agendas. So, so let's, let's, let's get right to it. Like who, who are the mysterious backers of center for American progress? So we know a lot, but we definitely don't know all of where their money comes from because they don't have, you know, a ton of disclosure requirements. How they are tell they structured? Uh, Sorry, just, just briefly, what, what are they structured as? Like a nonprofit, a C4? They're a C4. Okay. And, and in C4s, you know, the rules are you don't have to necessarily disclose all this money? Yeah. So... Especially their their big individual donors, um, you know, not 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 companies, but just like a billionaire who wants to throw money around. There, they don't have to tell you. Um, oh, how convenient! Who that gets. But let me guess, they're in favor of campaign finance reform. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so so let's talk about some of the shadiest backers. So some of their shadiest backers, they 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 get money from Northrop Grumman. Um, which is what? Yeah, E-Systems. These are, these are weapons contractors. Oh, okay. Um, big military industrial complex folks. They get a lot of money from pharma, from, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, from Walmart, um, from all of the biggest financial institutions, Goldman Sachs, Blackstone, Bank of America, um, and all of the various billionaire foundations that, you know, seem to bankroll all of these sorts of institutions. 
There are some foreign interests, though, that have gotten. There are. Yeah, let's. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly curious about the foreign interests. I feel like that's really fascinating because, as a candidate, for those of you who don't know, you can't take foreign money. Uh, people have gotten in trouble for trying to skirt that law. Even President Clinton was notably got in big trouble for selling out the Lincoln bedroom to Chinese interests. Uh, but. CAP seems to have found a, a workaround, you know, a way, a way around the system to take foreign money and, and then influence others. So who, who's who's supporting CAP? Well, CAP, you know, similar to the way that they get money from oil companies, they, they get money from uh, the Gulf states. So they, they faced a tremendous amount of criticism for taking money after it was disclosed um, in a leak. They take money from uh, the UAE. And the UAE is a, you know, repressive uh, regime that why would they be funding the progressive think tank? It, it's a strange um, connection. But nevertheless, uh, CAP, you know, was taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from um, the UAE. All right. So the UAE and, and then there's Israeli interests, right? Oh, yeah. CAP um, is is very connected with APAC and that whole nexus of far right money that goes into Israel and the pro Israel lobby, um, CAP is is very, very much a part of that world, which again, these are not progressive minded people. All right, so this is what's really interesting to me about CAP because they're they're a very large institution. They have a huge budget. Uh, their mouthpiece is is near Tandon, who, was essentially running the platform committee meetings for the Hillary side in 2016 for the Democratic platform meetings. Um, John Podesta, he was the president of CAP. Is he still? Is he still? He founded CAP, right? Yeah, he was the president up until 2011 when Nira became the president. And John Podesta was the chairman of, of Hillary Clinton's campaign. So there's there's a real industrial complex here, and it's it seems to be like a progressive washing industrial complex. Um, oh yeah, but what what I think is really concerning for a lot of progressives is how they overlap with actual progressives in Congress and and in the Senate and uh, like Elizabeth Warren, as you mentioned. I mean, there's there's obviously a scale, but uh, people have been afraid to cross Center for American Progress. And I think one of the most refreshing things about Bernie Sanders running in 2016 is suddenly folks felt like they didn't have to fear them. Uh, do they have the power that they did before? Do you feel like, you know, there's they're flexing their muscles? I mean, are they getting people elected? Like, what do they? What? Why is there this hold? Like, what? What do they have on on a Elizabeth Warren? I mean, if Elizabeth Warren doesn't go to a a cap conference, what happens? I think <laughs> that um, you know, caps caps real function in the Democratic Party is is to contain what's reasonable uh, ideologically. So, you know, Cap kind of Bernie Sanders notably is his ideas are are extreme and they're radical and there are much more more sensible positions that uh, Cap will produce um, like Medicare for all extra, which is really it's just a public option. Um, but when Cap rolled that out earlier in 2019, all of a sudden that became the the standard, like reasonable progressive policy. And Medicare for all is extreme because there's this more reasonable policy that um, now exists. And you know, uh, candidates like Beto O'Rourke and Mayor Pete, uh, they're reasonable because they support this reasonable policy. Uh, and, and Cap really exists to. Um, put those constraints on the Democratic Party by, you know, writing legislation that is never going to go too far. They know exactly where to stop. They've done the negotiations with with the corporations that fund them saying, all right, how far can we go publicly in our negotiation, knowing like where is our stance? Is, is, how far left can we go and off script? knowing very well that it's going to end up being in some centrist conservative uh, negotiation spot. 
And part of what's so problematic about the way that CAP is funded is it's not just like, you know, they take money from a foundation once a year and that's that. It'll be like, you know, CVS will give CAP money for a speci- for them to write a specific policy. Wow. So it really wow. is just laundering corporate America's wish list uh, by feeding it through this intermediary that gives it, you know, kind of a veneer of, of legitimacy. Um, because if a Senator were, you know, to promote a piece of legislation that was written by CVS, that would be considered unethical and nobody would take them seriously. But, you know, if it's written by Topher Spiro at the Center for American Progress, what's wrong with that? Even though CVS just pay, and, and, and this is a hypothetical, this didn't actually happen as far as I know, but it could have, um, but I don't know. This, it's just basically, it's a front group um, yeah. that's acting as lobbyists and, and, and a messaging outlet. I mean, I know firsthand that, that Nira has a cadre of, and, and she worked very closely with them in 2016 and, and many of them stuck around, but they had a messaging structure where she would send out a bat signal and then suddenly, you know, Joanne Reed and, and uh, you know, Zerlina Maxwell and all these, these influencers who have platforms uh, would say the same thing. And then there was a level below that where it would be, you know, social media influencers that they sort of propped up to have hundreds of thousands of followers. And then there were just followers who were on Reddit groups and different channels who would who would echo that. And then the bots. And so they had this messaging apparatus as well as the actual lobbying. I mean, it really is the infrastructure uh, for Washington Democratic centrists. It's not uh, it, it, it's it's not a real think tank. They're not doing tremendous research. They're drafting legislation for corporations, and they're effectively lobbyists and propagandists. Is that right? Does that seem like it's a fair yeah, analysis? That's, uh, uh, that's a pretty good analysis. They really blur the lines between being an advocacy organization, uh, a, a policy shop, um, a lobbyist group. It's it's kind of hard to tell what they're you know, it, it, it's hard to give them uh, a, a, an accurate description as one of those things. They, they're kind of an all all purpose um, arm of the centrist establishment. Hmm. Sam, uh, great work. Thanks. I'm sure we're not going to be done with the Center for American Progress anytime soon, uh, even under a Bernie Sander- Sanders presidency, although Many of them might just die of a heart attack. (laughs) So, (laughs) all right, Sam, thank you so much.